good job Ian can't see. <laughs> Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. So I want to talk to you about something that's been on my mind quite a lot lately. And as a photographer, I've had my fair share of ups and downs and, you know, moments of inspiration and moments of frustration. But through it all, there's been one piece of advice that's really stuck with me. And I believe it's made all of the difference in not only my work, but also in how much I enjoy these days out with my camera and I'd love for you to join me today as I explore a new part of my beloved North Wales with a friend and fellow photographer and we've tried our best, our very best to pick out a location that suits these let's say challenging conditions. So hello everybody welcome back to the channel we're with, oh nearly slipped, we're with Ian Worth, um, always a joy to go out with you mate especially in the rain <laughs> um, yeah, so we're in North Wales, Snowdonia or Eerery and um, yeah we were going to go out on a bit of a hike weren't we but I think we just, yeah I mean look at it, it would have been daft, you probably saw some of the footage there at the start of the videos we were driving over the pass, we'd have been up in that clag and well it was Ian that suggested it really, I'm glad he did because it's more sensible being in this sort of location. I mean, it's still a cracking hike, isn't it? But yeah, obviously. yeah. It looks like a really nice route, this actually. I'm looking forward to showing you. But um, yeah, as well, I wanted to share a little bit of advice, something that I've implemented, I mean, definitely over the past three years. Um, and it, it is, it's been a game changer, to be honest. It's, it's made a massive difference to the way that I approach my photography. I genuinely think it's made me a better photographer. And... Uh, yeah, we'll see what this location has to bring as well. And this wonderful Welsh weather. <laughs> so as we moved on, the rain was not letting up and it wasn't forecast to let up for the entire day. And it was just wet everywhere. The streams were rushing. Um, it, was, it was lovely to be out in, but yeah, really, really challenging at the same time. And I think a, a big part of me knew that the photography today was going to be tricky. However, I stumbled upon something I thought was worth having a look at and eventually worth, you know, getting the camera out for. So I'll get into this advice just in a second. Um, I just want to grab a quick photograph here first because I don't know if you can see, but this rather large spiderweb here has, has caught my eye and I must admit, I'm really happy with this because I want to try and revert to looking at some more intimate scenes, you know, rather than always looking at the big scene. I was doing it a lot throughout December. A lot of you will remember when I was doing my Advent series. And yeah, th this feels nice because of that. So I've just popped the camera into aperture priority and I've stuck it on F4 and I'm at 24 millimeters, so fairly wide and sort of just filling the right hand side of the frame with this wonderful subject here. And yeah, all the water droplets on him look fantastic. Really, really cool. And yeah, just a quick shutter speed because it's being blown around. And of course, because I'm shooting handheld as well. And probably a bit unexpected to start the day with a shot like this because of the nice, wonderful vistas that we've got in the background. But I'm always happy to get a photograph like this. And one thing I always say, it's just nice to get an image on the memory card to start off your photo shoot, isn't it? it takes the pressure off a little bit. Ah, so the advice that I wanted to share in today's video, which yeah, I think might be a little bit surprising, is really how over the past few years I've had a proper relaxed approach to my photography and more specifically really trying not to overthink things. The reason why I think it might be surprising is I do think a lot of, a, a lot of people that maybe look at someone that does it full time, they, may, they might think that behind the scenes they're just flat out planning all the time and perhaps that they're, you know, really meticulous with everything but I have honestly found over the past sort of three years at least that actually the opposite is best for me as a landscape photography. A it's better for my photography, I genuinely think I get better photographs with this more sort of relaxed, relaxed approach and secondly and more importantly in my opinion 
I enjoy my photo shoots a lot more. And when I look back to when I was first getting into photography, I was really trying to be very meticulous in my, my planning and my location scouting and trying to make sure I had all of the, the correct gear and you know chasing the light all of the time. And I do think there's a place for that. I think it's important to say that kind of meticulous side to it and, and planning and scouting can be really important. However, I felt it got to the stage where it was just hindering my creativity and ultimately kind of hindering my growth as a photographer, you know, and taking away the joy, taking away the joy from it all. And really where the premise of this video has come about is, um, I got this photograph, which a lot of you may have seen me post on Instagram and stuff. Go and give us a follow over there, by the way, if you'd like to see a bit more content from me. But this was just taken on my iPhone on a little weekend trip to Scotland that I went on recently with my girlfriend. And look, it was a no photography weekend, which for me, is very rare and actually quite difficult to do. And I don't know, yeah, it's not the best photograph in the world, but I just thoroughly enjoyed the moment of taking the photograph with my little iPhone 13 mini, not worrying about gear, just being really present with it, you know? And that's what made me think, that's been the key for me over the past few years is really prioritizing that enjoyment, being in the present moment and um, yeah, really try not to overthink things. The rain's not letting up at all, but as I'm sure you could see here, look, we've just got some wonderful, like, kind of atmospheric conditions. And it's, I mean, it's almost like we're up here in fog. It's brilliant. So. I mean, like I was saying at the start of the video, you know, we chose this location deliberately and it seems like it's worked out because imagine if we were up the top of a hill here or, you know, a hill without any features, just a bland mountain. We wouldn't see anything. It'd be terrible. Now, it appears that I've lost Ian. I've been too busy sticking back there, taking photographs of spider webs and stuff, but ah, there he is. I can see him. I think he's taking a shot down near that dry storm. Or we'll go and catch up with him. Oh, this is lovely, man, lovely. There he is, we found him on the other side of this wall. How are you getting on, mate? Doing well, like, I've just come this side of the wall just to try and get a bit of shelter from the rain, but yeah, basically I'm shooting this old tree here. This, I think it's a silver birch, isn't it? Which is uh, kind of against this stone wall and I've got those pines upon the ridge line. Trying to, ah, this one here, yeah, yeah, uh, nice. Trying to make the composition work, you know, just a bit of separation there with the fog and yeah, I think it works. Yeah, it looks good, man. I was just saying, actually, it's really atmospheric, isn't it? It's, it's nice, yeah. Uh, by the way, I just wanted to say, Ian has very recently just uh, finished writing a ebook, a compositional ebook, and I think you said it's took you a, over a year or about a year. It took me a year to put together, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Six years to shoot. You know? Yeah, yeah. The longest ebook in history. <laughs> um, but yeah, knowing Ian personally, he's, he, you know, he puts a lot of effort into things. He, he's very meticulous with things like that. So definitely go and check it out. In fact, I'll put it in the video description if you want to go and have a look. But um, yeah, I'm going to keep wandering around here and try and make some of all this atmosphere for now. Come through this little gap here in the wall that you could see there. Uh, I think I'm going to sort of, well, half copy <laughs> Ian's composition, really. I just think it looks really cool. As you can probably see here from this perspective where we've got this dry stone wall that sort of takes us into the birch tree that Ian was just shooting. And then again, you may be able to see off in the background, I think it is some Scots pines on this ridge line of this mountain through all of the atmosphere, it looks quality. So yeah, probably just handheld, I'm gonna give it a shot. All right, so I'm not particularly sure about this photograph. It's, it's a nice one to stop and shoot, you know, just, just to get the sort of creative side of your mind going and well, just enjoying it, kind of like everything that I'm talking about in this video, relaxing, you know, being out with another photographer, not being so hard on yourself and stuff, you know, all of these things play into it all. But I wanted to put it up on the screen here. This is pretty much as I'm shooting it. The aspect ratio may be slightly different. And I spoke about this in a recent composition when I was out in the Lake District. And I wanted to just show you the importance of, of how I've, um, or how high I've, I've placed my camera on the tripod here just because there's a nice little gap between our main subject here, which is the silver birch tree pretty much, and some distant trees through the fog. When I was first taking the image, I was too high up and the silver birch tree, its branches were cutting in to them background trees. And like I said in that video on the Lake District, oh, it just felt off, it all felt wrong. So yeah, 
I don't think I'm going to be too mad on this photograph, but again, like I said a couple of seconds ago there, it's just lovely, isn't it? It's just lovely to stop and play around with composition. You know, it's the best thing to do as a landscape photographer is just uh, allowing yourself to be free <laughs> and not following all these little obligations. That, because we sort of set, set obligations to ourselves, don't we? Of, you know, I must get out and get a good sunset photograph this evening. I must shoot with a certain camera, a certain sensor size, a certain lens. I must go to certain locations. And I think what I'm getting it at is I think sometimes all of that can be a little bit of a trap. And yeah, ultimately, like I said, this is the main thing that I want to get across. It could take away the fun, the enjoyment, because that is the machine that keeps all of this going. For me, anyway, well, it's a bit of a, a weird term to use, isn't it, machine? But you know what I mean? It keeps everything moving as long as you're feeling the joy and as long as you're feeling inspired. So yeah, this is the final image here. And you know what? I really wasn't happy with this photograph, but like I was saying, it was brilliant just to stop and play around with composition. In fact, in a couple of minutes, myself and Ian, we chat about the idea that it's actually good to take bad photographs. But anyway, we moved on and we found this little area here where our photographer's instinct almost was just telling us that there was a photograph here. So I tried my best to play around a little bit, just handheld. And uh, yeah, I managed to get this photograph here. Again, I wasn't particularly happy with it, but as always, it was just lovely to stop mess around with composition you know get the creative juices flowing in your head and again i just think that is always a good thing a stop to take a photograph is never ever wasted so ian's away up there just grabbing a quick photograph and whilst he is it's a good opportunity for me to say another massive thank you to squarespace for sponsoring today's video now if you've never heard of squarespace i'm here to tell you all about them they are an all-in-one platform that you can use to build your very own website and my own website is through Squarespace and I am so so proud of it honestly it's a joy to be sponsored by them and the biggest selling point of Squarespace for me is that it is so so easy they've got loads of fantastic professional looking templates that you can use you add a few bits of text and images and before you know it honestly within a couple of hours your website will be up and running. And if like me, you'd like to sell things through your website as well, you can do that with Squarespace. They've got plenty of what's called e-commerce packages and I use it to sell my prints, my eBooks. I advertise my one-to-one -one workshops on there, my calendars when it's the right season. And yeah, it's fantastic. Like I always say, I wouldn't be able to run my business without it. And finally, Squarespace have got fantastic customer service as well, award-winning customer service in fact which really plays into what I was talking about just a few seconds ago there with how easy it all is, you know. If there's something that you're struggling with, you know, you hit a couple of little speed bumps, they will be there to help you out. And trust me, I've used the customer service myself and it is fantastic. But yeah, all in all, I wanna get across how you needn't be scared, don't be intimidated. Give it a go through Squarespace. There'll be a link in the description below that'll give you a 14 day free trial. So you've got absolutely nothing to lose and if you like your free trial make sure you use the offer code henry turner at checkout to get 10 percent off your first purchase You'd never continue would you no yeah ian was just saying about i suppose how it's kind of it's good to take bad photographs uh which i, I don't know you might think that's a bit strange but i mean i completely agree it's something that i think about all the time it's just i mean it sets apart the good photographs from the bad for one thing but I don't know, it's just more about the enjoyment of being out, isn't it? Like, it's easy to just con consistently judge your photographs all the time, but I just don't know if that would really get you anywhere, you know, like... Absolutely. Well, I think as a landscape photographer, you're probably going to take more bad photos than good ones. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, otherwise, yeah. it's just the way yeah. it is, so you've got to embrace the bad yeah. ones and, and, you know, celebrate the... Exactly. <laughs> the yeah, yeah. We've been talking a lot about, like, cause obviously we both do YouTube and stuff, about how, like... Um, with our channels at least we really try and show that's sort of like ne negative side of things or, or when when we fail in inverted commas because you're never really failing properly are you we just think that's really important that you don't see us succeeding and, and and buzzing all the time you know i think it's really important some of that i try to talk about a lot on my channel anyway but um yeah i'll spin you around here as you can see the con conditions have been just consistently drizzly and 
stuff all day. Very tricky to be out shooting in, but wonderful. And look, where we've been today has just been so quiet. We've not seen anyone out. It is quality. So we're gonna continue with this little loop that we're on now anyway, see if we can find anything else. So on we went, and I'll tell you what, it was not getting any drier, but we stumbled across this really cool, like spooky woodland. And again, it was absolutely one of these little locations that just felt like there had to be a photograph here. We couldn't leave without one. And I got this image just on the iPhone messing about, but I have to be honest with you, at this stage, I was feeling a little bit frustrated. You know how it is when you're in a location where you just feel like there's an image there and you can't find that image. But this is something I talk about in a little while anyway, you know, I just had to move on and I suppose see if there were photographs elsewhere. I also wanted to chat to Ian about what he thought about the topic of today's video, what he thought about going out with quite a relaxed approach. So me and Ian uh, have come down a little bit from that spooky little woodland and i'm just heading over here see those two little trees there just to investigate i think there might be a shot there but uh, i was just going to ask ian about i suppose the premise of this video everything i'm talking about so the video that i'm making today is about i suppose how i <laughs> oh look at that look at that um yeah how i approach my photo shoots and um i suppose i'm trying to say what works for me is really going out with a relaxed attitude, not planning too much. And that that makes me a better photographer. And, and the ultimate point I'm trying to make is, I think it, I enjoy it a lot more when I haven't got big plans yeah. in place. But yeah. what sort of photographer are you? Like, do you relate well, with that or? Yeah, I mean, I, I like to plan. Like I like to have a sort of an outline of what I'm going to do during the day. Yeah. But like sticking to those plans, I think is, you know, it can be detrimental, can't it? To yeah, you? yeah. So it's like, yeah, you might have a location to go and a few ideas that you've maybe previously scouted or that you might want to shoot, but if conditions are not working, it's just better to abandon it. Actually, like adap look. adaptability, yeah, yeah exactly, that's a big yeah. one. Don't just get drawn in for like getting the shots that you went out Yeah, for. yeah. It's just to try and get out there and, and explore and see. That's really and, true. You know, and if you, you know, if the light's not right for those compositions yeah. that you, you, you were seeking, then just look for something that does work. Yeah, proper. Kind like, of, yeah, kind of, um, you know, shoot for the conditions not yeah. necessarily for what you planned that's a really good point yeah. man yeah we were just saying off camera actually like it's probably more about balance you know rather than having one attitude each time that you go out one approach each time that you go out it's about you know you maybe have got a bit of a loose plan and you sort of give yourself an extra couple of hours to explore like i'd have hated to come to this area today with like a really stringent plan and not being able to explore all this it's oh, wonderful yeah. it's amazing yeah um, but yeah i'm gonna go on See if I can make something out of that little section up there because. Definitely a shot yeah. there, man. <laughs> <laughs> so we've made it up to this little section here where I thought there might have been a shot. And I feel like it's one of them where it's almost there. So what I was looking at with these two trees here, the larger tree and the smaller tree, it feels like there are a couple of characters. I got this image maybe about three weeks ago now, and I called it the feuding family. And um, I really like that idea of finding, you know, trees and looking at how they interact with each other, you know, just using your imagination. And I could sort of see something here. However, I don't think it's working compositionally and I'll try and show you why. Uh, the main thing really, I think it's sort of this section down at the bottom. I mean, it's all just too messy. You know, the branches, protrude down into the dry stone wall it becomes really really messy and I can't sort of move left like this um, because then the trees start touching each other the two trees you see what I mean it just it just doesn't seem to work which I, I suppose actually leads me on to a little bit of a tip I think it's really important to know when to not take a photograph and I feel like I've been doing that for the past couple of hours and try not to get too down on yourself you know if something doesn't work move on you know expend your energy elsewhere like we've probably only about three quarters of the way through this little wander here me and ian and you know i can see a woodland down there i'd rather save this creative energy for potential photographs further down so you know that in itself is perhaps a little bit of a balance because you don't want to be leaving you know compositions early because you're being a bit hasty you know but yeah i think it's really important to know when to just say, mm, doesn't really work for me. It's all good, <laughs> let's just move on. 
So Ian's away back where we were before actually, just he was waiting on some fog for a particular photograph. So fingers crossed he's got that, got that because it's been really changeable and I've just been, I mean, I'm struggling a little bit with the photography to be honest. However, I've just spent like five or 10 minutes on this little, this little ledge here looking across this beautiful North Wales landscape here, just, just enjoying how much the views are changing and peaks are getting revealed and little trees off in the distance and oh man it is it's tough to be out in the photography is a little bit frustrating don't get me wrong but just standing here and watching it like pass over as the fog shifts it is just stunning i love north wales man so much every single time i come back here i just i actually have a real sense of belonging to be honest when i'm here perhaps because you know it's very similar to the lake district in many ways I spent a lot of my early days photographing here and you know filming these YouTube videos but yeah just it's lovely isn't it look birds flying away off in the distance just I think it's nice to stand sometimes and just admire the landscape and not always obsess so much about you know oh I must photograph it I must get a good photograph yeah it is just beautiful might be a photograph here actually <laughs> might be a photograph after all that So yeah, maybe, maybe a photograph off in the distance. I'm just shooting it handheld. And I've popped the Nikon Z7 into the DX mode just to get a bit of extra reach. But there's a small sort of rounded hill, some really nice layers of trees before the hill. And I'm sort of shooting across the tops of them. And it, I don't know, it's got a really nice painterly feel to it, especially with all the mist and the rain shooting through all of that. Yeah, it looks, it looks like it might be kind of cool. <laughs> might be kind of cool you know and it's sort of like deliberately softened and things like that which i do like i like them sort of shots however it is absolutely one of them like most images in fairness that um, i don't know if it's going to be any good until i get it home i really do not know but yeah we shall see i'm really glad i've managed to get a shot of uh, the direction of the landscape that i've been admiring for the past five to ten minutes like i was just saying if that makes sense back down towards the southwest um, that's really nice at least, but yeah, fingers crossed it's half decent anyway. Yeah, well, I have to be honest with you, ladies and gents, yet another image I wasn't particularly delighted with. However, as you know, it happens. It's part of the process and, well, it was time to meet back up with Ian. So Ian has just stumbled across this big beast here, this like massive, um, really characterful tree there, look. and. Um, there's actually some nice light, we're saying there's quite a nice glow coming down through the canopy at the top, which is nice, but um, I think I'm done. I think I'm done. <laughs> this will definitely be the last shot for both of us, I think. But uh, yeah, um, thanks so much for, for joining us on this adventure. It's been wonderful. And as always, please do comment down below regarding everything I've spoken about today, about overthinking and whether or not you go out planning and things like that. I'd be really interested to hear your points of view. And yeah, I think we're myself and here Ian will probably go off and get some food in a bit, but yeah, it's been wonderful. Um, cheers, Ian. <laughs> uh, it's been a good one, and thank you so much. And I shall see you on the next adventure, which will likely be with Ian again, because I think we're going to go out tomorrow. So, see you then. Out. <laughs> <laughs>